Avatar 2. John Landau, the Avatar producer, recently spoke to RNZ, that's Radio New Zealand. If you recall, a few weeks ago, we were talking about how Avatar 2 had to put their production on hold because of coronavirus, but New Zealand released a bunch of guidelines on how to return to production safely, and they are planning to resume filming Avatar 2 shortly. Well, in the RNZ article, or in the RNZ interview, they asked him a few questions, and we got a couple of details about Avatar 2. The first thing I want to say about the interview is it sounds like John Landau really wants to make a good impression with New Zealand. So here's what he says. We feel very comfortable because of the actions of your government and also the responsibility the people took to really curb the virus here. So we feel we're coming back to the safest place in the world possible thanks to a team of people that we've worked with. We believe we have a very thoughtful, detailed, and diligent safety plan that will keep everybody as safe as possible in these unprecedented times. So... Praising New Zealand, probably praise that they deserve. And then when he was asked if he could divulge some Avatar secrets, John Landau said the following. The only secret is not so much of a secret. It's the caliber of talent that New Zealand has and the artisans who are bringing the world of Pandora to life at a higher level and higher quality than one could ever imagine. So again, he's a big, big fan of New Zealand. Who can blame him? They gave us Lord of the Rings. But getting to the part of the interview where he actually divulges some vague story details about Avatar 2. He says, This is the story of the Sully family and what one does to keep their family together. Jake and Neytiri have a family in this movie. They are forced to leave their home. They go out and explore the different regions of Pandora, including spending quite a bit of time on the water, around the water, in the water. I think, why do people turn to entertainment today more so than ever? I think it's to escape, to escape the world we're in, to escape the other pressures they have in their lives. So, Alon, one of the things we were wondering is what is going to be the big hook, the big draw for Avatar 2? For Avatar 1, it was the 3D, it was the motion capture, it was all that. For Avatar 2, it sounds like they've been pushing this for years. Every time Avatar 2 comes up, they really want to hype the fact that we shot a bunch of this movie underwater. <laughs> so on water, is that enough to get you in the theater watching Avatar 2? Don't, don't all the space movies already film a lot underwater? I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> to get the effect of floating? Yeah. Um. Yeah, Speaking I mean, of which, Doug Lyman, I believe, is filming a movie with Tom Cruise in space. So James Cameron, the water thing might have been more impressive a few years ago, but now we got people shooting in space. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, when I see the movie, will I see something that is more impressive than if they just used like CGI and other effects? CGI like, water? Well, no. like, can't they pretty much accomplish the same thing without actually filming underwater? It's cool, but when I'm actually watching the movie... Do they want me literally thinking about how they filmed it while I'm watching it? Right. Will it be a technical marvel where we look at this and go, wow, I can't believe they filmed this underwater. And by the way, I'm pulling up here a picture that John Landau tweeted the other day or uh, posted on Instagram. Our avatar sets are ready and we couldn't be more excited. So we've got a picture here of the Matador, a high-speed forward command vessel, and the Picador, jet boat. So uh, there's a little glimpse of what you're going to see in this movie. He goes on in the interview to say, I think with Avatar, we have an opportunity to allow people to escape to an incredible world with incredible characters that they will follow in much the same way as Peter Jackson was able to do with Lord of the Rings. So that's what we're looking forward to doing. That's the part of the interview that gets me excited, the Lord of the Rings comparison. Now, no part of me thinks that Avatar 2 is going to equal any of the Lord of the Rings movies in quality, but I think in the world building department, maybe they can. As much as Avatar is not a movie I revisit or think about that much, I remember Pandora being awesome, and that's the part that most sticks in my mind. So I am excited to see how James Cameron evolves the world of Pandora especially with all the advances in technology that we've had since then. And I just, in general, have not felt transported to an epic alternative fantasy world like I did with Lord of the Rings. I haven't felt that in a long time. I was hoping Star Wars would do it for me, but for some reason, it didn't. Maybe Avatar 2 can accomplish that. 
We'll find out hopefully in a year or so when this movie actually releases. Alon, any other thoughts on Avatar 2, 3, 4, or 5? Uh, I mean, I'm definitely interested in seeing the world building aspect of this. Uh, I think the, the story in the first one didn't really blow my mind. So I, right. it's more about the, the world. The world me. of Pandora. And I'm assuming whatever happens, it's going to look incredible. 